the nation of Israel was a natural temple. He was seeking after what? Something even more greater, a spiritual temple. Yeah. Deuteron Deuteronomy 14 and 2 says, For thou art a holy people unto Yahweh, thy Elohim. And Yahweh had chosen thee, he had chosen thee to be a peculiar, a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. That's Israel he spoke to. But when you talk, when you look into 1 Peter chapter 2 and 9, this is what Yahweh said. But you are a chosen generation. Now he's saying the same thing that he said to Israel. He's now saying to what? The Kaleo or the Ecclesia. The called out ones. Israel was called out to be that people. A pattern. This, you must be able to see the pattern or the purpose for the temple and the furniture in the temple. First Peter 2 and 9. We are familiar with this. But you are a chosen generation. You think he's talking to the Jews there? No. He's talking to what? To who? The Ecclesia, the Kaleo. He's talking to those called out ones. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show for the praises of him that I called you. Remember the word Kaleo, it means what? To be called out. To be called out. That's what that word uh, called means. Kaleo. I have called you out of darkness into my marvelous light. And that was the purpose for that table of showbread. Not just to show forth a natural thing, but it was to show forth a spiritual thing. It was prophetically speaking. Hallelujah. And in the midst, or right in the front of the golden candlestick, you have something that is known as the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh. And inside that Ark, in that natural Ark, there was what? The laws of Yahweh. Inside, that was the natural purpose. It was a house for the laws. Listen to me carefully, saints. It was a house. It was a house for the laws of Yahweh Almighty. That was the purpose for the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was divided into two pieces. You had something that was known as the mercy seat. And the mercy seat was the covering for the Ark of the Covenant. Listen carefully, saints. The mercy seat was to cover the Ark of the Covenant. It was to cover the house of the Word of Yah. And we're going to get into it even more as this message goes on. Let's turn to Jeremiah 31 and verse 33. Hallelujah. Let's turn. Because each one of these furniture, and we can find more scriptures than this. I just want to give us so we can see that it is scripturally based. But this shall be, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with you, with the house of Israel. After those days, said Yahweh, listen carefully. After those days, said Yahweh, I will put my laws in their inward parts. And write there and write it in their heart. First Corinthians 3 and 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of Elohim, and the spirit of Elohim dwelleth in you. So the ultimate place that Yahweh wanted his laws to rest was where? In our heart. Hallelujah. That was the purpose. The place to dwell. And guess what? The mercy seat of Yahweh was covering his Lord or his, his, his house all the time. From the old covenant, we see Yahweh placing a mercy seat upon the ark of the covenant. Yes. And like I said, the mercy seat was to what? Cover the ark of the covenant. You know why? Because it is because of his mercy that we are not consumed. Right. And Yahweh Almighty, He placed that mercy seat right there to cover us with His mercy, what? All the time, His house. It ain't just start the mercy of Yahweh. It started a long time ago. A long time ago. 
the mercies of Yahweh. From Adam time, from the better sheet of time, Yahweh Almighty was showing forth his grace and his mercy to the house of Israel, spiritual Israel and natural Israel. So since of the Most High, I presented to you the temple, the natural temple of Yahweh, and the purpose for those natural furniture. And you are to go and do likewise. Become these pieces so that Yahweh Almighty can get the glory in your temple or in his temple. Be the light of the world. Be that temple where prayers and offerings are given on a daily basis. Present your body a living sacrifice unto your father. And that is why Yahweh gave us that old covenant. Does he know that one day he can break this one down? He can break it down and the only thing that will left standing is the real image that he wanted all along and that's you and I. He only built that so that you can see what he wants you to become. Yeah. Huh? Now let's turn to Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. I'm going to save you a deal about this temple in a little bit more detail. Now, where there is a natural or earthly tabernacle, there is, believe it, believe you me, there is a heavenly tabernacle. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken came first. Chicken. Right? Then the chicken began to what? Produce the eggs. But how he created? He created no, 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 no uh, uh, almond seeds. He created what? An almond tree. When Yahweh first began to create, he didn't create an apple seed. He created what? A tree. When Yahweh created man, he didn't create a baby. He created who? A full-blown man. So that is to show for what Yahweh's real, real intention is. That's why the words of the earth, the whole heavens is declaring his glory. Not only the heaven, you are to declare his glory also. So now where there is a natural or earthly kingdom, there is a heavenly kingdom. And everything that I showed you on that diagram is in heaven, besides the first two, okay? Besides the first two. The first two, like a rocket, Minister Lloyd, when a rocket take off, it take off in its full form. But as it go higher, it began to what? Draw off the, un the pieces that are not needed anymore. So in heaven, or oh, let me is your sister be, your here. All of these are in heaven. All of these, besides these two. Besides those two. The rocket has already dropped off those two because they're not needed anymore. Mm. It's already dropped off these two because it's not needed anymore. And we're going to go into that a little, a little later. Why they're not needed anymore. Okay? Huh? Oh yeah, they ain't need it no more. But the other pieces, they still need it. See, because you ain't need to, 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 to bring the offering to the priest no more. Hey, we can get into that. Now, let's go into Hebrew chapter 8, verse 5. This is the new covenant. This is in the new covenant or the new testament or the new agreement. And I always call the book of Hebrews now. This is an Old Testament book written in the New Testament. Everything in Hebrew concerned what? That natural temple. Okay? So the Old Covenant is not, has not yet been exhausted or depleted. It is not all done up away with. Okay? The Old Covenant. Now Hebrew 8 and 5. Listen to what Hebrew 8 and 5 and tells me what this sound like to you. Who serve unto the example or copy of pattern and shadow of what? Heavenly things. What does this sound like to you? Which scripture does this sound like to you? We just read it. We just read the scripture, huh? Didn't we just read it? Yeah. And we talked about that. This natural temple was what created what? To bring the kingdom of Yahweh, the heavenly kingdom where? Yeah, right here, right here, Sister Barrett. It is to what? To bring forth the kingdom of heaven here to earth. Now here, Paul is verifying, or the New Testament Testament is agreeing or saying amen to the old covenant. Or Paul is saying that just the way it is. It showed for 
until it was an example or a copy or a pattern and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished or instructed of Elohim when he was about to make the temple or the tabernacle for see said he Yahweh that thou make all things according or exactly to the pattern shown to thee in the mountain. We know what that mount was, right? That was Mount Sinai. Now the natural temple is a copy, example, etc., 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 of what is in heaven. Hmm? We go on to that later. We ain't going there now. Now the tribe of Levi. Let's get into it. The tribe or the nation of Levi, the earthly priesthood, was to serve or remain standing or remain in force until Shiloh came. Hallelujah. It was only for a season. A season. That's a better word. It was only to succumb for season. That's why you got to learn how to hold on to the horns of the altar and never let it go. Because the glory is in the temple. The glory is in those furnitures. And when you understand it, you'll receive like never yet before what Yahweh Almighty has for you. And you stand up and you tell the devil in the place or in the midst of adversity, let me tell you, get the hands behind me, Satan. For it is written, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now this tribe of Levi was chosen. And if you look, on your diagram, you'll see there's another one, another diagram on the side of this temple. It was only to stand or stay in force until Yahweh comes. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 49 and verse 10. This is Jacob. He was about to die. In Egypt he was. He was about to die. And he was telling his children, he was telling his sons, I'm going to prophesy what will take place to you in the latter days. I'm going to begin to declare what Yahweh Almighty do. And he is now speaking to the, uh, the, 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 the tribe of Judah. He's now speaking to the tribe of Judah. And he said the scepter, Pastor talk about this scepter or this mace. In other words, the scepter is what? A mace. Or it is a staff of righteousness. The uh, Genesis 49 and 10. The scepter, the leadership. Listen here now carefully, sense of the Mosiah. He's speaking to a tribe called Levi. As in the Old Covenant, only those who were of the tribe of Levi could become priests. Mm -hmm. Only the tribe of Levi. So the tribe of God of Nephtali, they could not want or not. They had the desire to be priests. Like Paul told Timothy, if a man desire the office of a priest, if a man desire an office of a, of a priest or bishop, like a bishop, he desired a good work. Yeah. If you were off the tribe of Nephtali, you couldn't desire that because you couldn't become a priest. Only the tribe, I want to see, see, the, see the grace of the mercy seat spread before us here. Only because of the grace of Yahweh that every tribe can become priesthood right now. They, the tribe of Levi, were just to be the example. So when Shiloh came and he began to spread the tentacles uh, uh, of the, 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 the priesthood, all of them would already understand how they supposed to what? Serve in the temple of Yahweh because they were given the example. Everybody yes. understand what I'm saying? Yes. Now only the tribe of Levi could have taken on this whole. Now, the tribe of Judah, he's saying that this kingship or this leadership will not depart or be taken away from the tribe of Judah, nor the Lord give up from between Judah's feet until Shiloh come, or the ultimate ruler or king who it belongs to come. In other words, only the tribe of Judah will be kings in your nation. If you notice, all of the, the monarchy came through who? The tribe of Judah. Even Yeshua came through who? The tribe of Judah. And he's saying, my blessing of kingship, this kingdom that I want to set up on earth, this royal priesthood that I want to erect, will not be erected until Yeshua comes. Because it is true, your seed Abraham, it is through your seed, Abraham, that all 
nations shall be blessed. Yes. For all nations could not be blessed no. until Shiloh come. Hallelujah. All nations could not be priest and king until Shiloh came. Shiloh had to come and bless everybody in order for them. See, now you can become a royal priest. Yes. Hey, glory. Until you show up. That's why oh, you couldn't be it before he came. Only the tribe of Levi could be that royal priesthood. Huh? Why? Because the ultimate sacrifice had to come. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead myself. Because I want to lay this foundation. So, you see, when we teach in history, we get kind of sleepy. It's the history, not the little jerky jerky stuff. We're going to give you the power. Those emotional stuff. It's this history. We're going to bring you into freedom of Yahweh. I believe that's why I praise my Yahweh so much. Because I know who I am. I don't need nobody to tell me. I know I got the victory. It's just a better one. I only got three and four dressed now. But I know who I am. You don't need to tell that little baby who child she for. She knows who child she for. Hallelujah. When a mommy and a daddy come, what she can do? I can leave you, Grammy, right now. And I go into my mind. I go into my body. See, when you know who you are. See, that's why we can tell Israel. Sister Nikki, Shiloh came. Through the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. And this scripture was fulfilled. Listen to what Yahweh tell Abraham. He said, to your seed, to your seed, will I give? The gates of your enemies. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He said, I can give it to your descendant. Mm -hmm. the and he said, Your, through you, Abraham, faithful Abraham, shall all the nations, shall all the yeah. nations of the world be blessed. Yeah. Bye, 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 bye. Case closed for right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> now look at here. The old covenant or the old agreement. See, let's learn to appreciate the old covenant here. Yeah? Hallelujah. Let's learn to see it for what it really is. Mm. It is for natural man to be given an eye to see the spiritual things of Yahweh. Hallelujah. That's how Yahweh opened up the natural eye to go into what? The spiritual world. Yes. See, if you can't understand that natural world, that means your eyes close. But when your eyes become single, then the whole body is full of light. In other words, when you can see, you are able to look at your whole body and see the purpose which your body is created for. You know what that leads me where I have to go? I can go now because I want. My eyes are open now. And I can see. And that is what the old covenant is for. She is called teacher. She is called what? Schoolmaster. She is called what? Shadow. Because she's there to cause your understanding to be open. Yes. To bring light to you. Mm. That is what the old covenant is for. That's why the devil don't want you to appreciate it, you know. No, no, no. Yeah, that won't be. Don't go there yet, yeah? <laughs> don't go there. You're prophesying. So the old covenant or the agreement. Listen carefully. Says of the Most High. Or the Old Testament. Works of the law, the works of the law will stand until Yahweh or Yeshua come. We're talking about the works of the law. Because there's some part of Moses' prophetic law or his word and those in, in, in that Torah that is not being fulfilled. Like take for instance, I told you that where there's a natural, there's a heavenly. Yes, that spiritual or heavenly kingdom. We ain't touched the heavenly kingdom yet. Concerning that golden altar of incense that is in heaven. Or concerning uh, uh, the ark of the covenant that is in heaven. I tell you today, since the, anytime you read the book of Revelation, and you read about the throne of Yahweh, you know, it, with another word for that throne, if you study, that's the mercy seat. Hallelujah. That's the mercy seat. Anytime you see the word throne and the word revelation, we can prove it. It is talking about that mercy seat. Hallelujah. Not only so, you know the law can't be done away with, uh, Minister Barrett. No. Not if the mercy seat is in heaven. Hallelujah. Not if the 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 the, the menorah, the golden candlestick, still standing there. That altar, they ain't fulfilled yet, they ain't come yet. They are shadow of things, what? To come. Yeah. Yahweh, the spirit of Yahweh, is that a prophecy? He will tell you before it comes to pass. Because he is what? All knowing. That's why he's saying, I help you to walk in darkness. That's why I know. 
that most people who say that the laws are done away, they don't have that full understanding of what they're saying. Because if they understand, that is why we are so special here. It ain't that we know more, it's just that Yahweh chose us to be that peculiar people to teach what? All nation. In order for you to walk where you have to go, you gotta have sight to see, hey. Yeah, and you gotta see so Yahweh open our eyes so that we can be eyes to all notions. Hallelujah. Uh, T.D. Jakes, all nation. They ain't teaching it the way here because they don't understand. They understand it from what they were, were taught. We understand it by what has been what? Revealed. Revealed by the Holy Spirit to a man. And hence that anointing that Yahweh put on the priesthood come down upon who? You and I. I've been in, in quote unquote church all of my life and I never see these kind of things. Huh? No. Minister no. Mary, you've been all your life, Sister John. Sanita, all of you have been all your life and you ain't never hear it. Come on, I speak the truth and share the devil. Now we got some people who the Spirit of Yahweh has not moved upon. And they will say that Yahweh ancient land now has been removed. I call it abomination unto Yahweh. Yahweh can't change. There's only a shadow, an example. It's your schoolmaster. If you get rid of all the teachers in the classroom, ain't nobody going to learn nothing. And Satan all that. Get rid of that schoolmaster and they will never understand that. They bring the lie. Now I know part of the law, Shadow come. He say the tribe of Judah will always be the kings until Shadow come. Uh huh? But Shadow came. And now you got all kind of kings these days. England and all take up the monarchy. You got kings of France and all. They got the power now to become kings, eh? All over the world. Now the works of the law. And what are the works of the law? The offerings that we bring to him. Hmm? And the offering that we bring was for what? Either sin, transgress, sin that we sin against Yahweh, or sin that we transgress against what? Our brothers. Or, so we had to what? Bring restitution. Recompense have to be paid. And it was showing that Yeshua will come for the sins and the transgression of the word. He will come what? And pay the ultimate price. That's what the Lamb of God and the burnt offering was all about. So you don't need them no more. Because all you got to do, you ain't got to run to Moses or you ain't got to run to Aaron or his son Gershon no more. You can run, run to me. Because now you're not a high priest. Hey. So when he came, he took on that, that, that Levitical priesthood. And you know who took on? He took on the high priest. And you know who we are? We are the regular priests serving in the Jebus. That's who we are. And they're not only of the tribe of Levi. They're from every tribe, kindred, and nation. And guess what, women? Underneath the Levitical, and I'm not a feminist. Underneath the Levitical uh, uh, priesthood, only men can be priests. Woman couldn't be a priest. Oh, no. But this is what Yahweh said, I can pour my spirit hey. through the prophet Joel. Hey. I can pour my spirit oh, upon all flesh. He said, this is what prophesy or preach. Your sons and your daughters. Your man servant or that man who you treat so bad, I will pour my spirit on him too. The God might will pour my spirit upon him. Huh? If you are not a Jew underneath those, underneath your covenant, you couldn't walk in the blessings of Abraham. And the only way to get the blessings of Yahweh, you have to be what? Abraham's seed. So it was a shadow of things to come. Even faithful Abraham was a shadow of the Messiah who would come. And in all nations shall the world be blessed. Oh, glory, huh? I think you deserve a praise. Heaven and earth will pass away hey. before one jot. Oh, one, 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 I got so much love in my heart and I can't even hurt if I want to hurt. You know, I can call your eye black and then you call my eye black, we can laugh over it after that. But 
from there, goody. Hey. You know when we hold on to dance? That's it. So you see the beauty of the old covenant, hey? That's right. And guess what? It'll never be done away with. Like I said, there's still some prophetic inclination. We can talk about them on Wednesday about this uh, altar in heaven because we don't have time to do it here in the teaching. Now, man could not sit on the mercy seat. Never. They could not sit. Ain't worthy. We could say no, but let's prove why they couldn't sit on the day. Huh? Yeah. Let's let's see what the scripture has to say. Let's turn the book, uh, scripture to Leviticus. We're going to go over, over covenant. Uh, 14. See this little way you study to show yourself. When they talk, you will be able to go from what? Scripture and show them. Hey, I ain't just saying this from the top of my head. Let me show you what the scripture is saying about this. Let's go to, to Leviticus uh, 16 and 14. Somebody read it. Mm -hmm. John said, that's why we tie up the devil every time when we talk. When he talk, why? Because we got scriptures to back up what we yes, say. Sir. Yes. Hey! <laughs> see, when the eye, when the eye singles, the whole body is full of like that. Yes. <laughs> you can't afford me no more. Because I was blind, but now I see. Yes. Yeah, I was blind, so nigga. Yes. You're going to carry me where you want to carry me with every wave of doctrine or yes. teaching. You're going to carry me, but you can't carry me no more. Because I can what see. That's right. Hey, you be there? Read it for me, someone. The book is 16, verse 14. Man could not sit on the mercy seat. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger mm -hmm. upon the mercy seat. Where are you going to sprinkle it? Upon the mercy seat. Stop right there. That's not read out of peace. Read out of peace. Eastward, yeah. Yeah, read it. Upon the mercy seat. Eastward. And upon the mercy seat shall be sprinkled of the blood with his finger seven times. I'm sorry, the sprinkle. Now we see what the priest was supposed to do, young, young Shante. He was supposed to take the blood of the offering and sprinkle it on the what? Mercy. Now remember the words say, without the shedding of blood, there's no what? Remission. There's no forgiveness of sin. So on the mercy seat, the blood had to be poured. It had to be sprinkled on that mercy seat. Okay? Now someone read uh, Hebrews 8 and 1. Hebrews 8 verse 1. Hebrews 8 verse 1. You got it? Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. Mm -hmm. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne. Of the what? Uh huh. Now I said to you beforehand, anytime you look in the book of Revelation and you see that word throne, it means the mercy seat. Now if you look in your concordance and you look at the word throne and it gives you the number for the word throne, the same definition is carried through for all. Just only one definition for that word throne. Like you know how some definition you have two and three different numbers or two or three definitions. Like the word sons having different many meanings. The word throne only has one meaning. We're going to get into it later. I need somebody to read now Revelation 8 and 3. Revelation 8 and 3. Mm -hmm. Revelation 8 and 3. That's how we rightly divide or put in section the word of Yahweh. Line upon line and precept of what? Precept. Yeah, you got to go in different parts to find it. Revelation, you be there? We got it? And another angel came and uh -huh. stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers. Mm -hmm. of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Revelation 8 and 3. Yes. And another angel came, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it 
with the prayer of our sins upon the golden altar which was where which was where and which was before where so i told you that any time you see the look at your diagram any time you see the word thrown and go look at it I, I have the number right there with the numbers but i want you to go study so when we come back wednesday since the pastor you are one of these now this angel, remember I say it's line upon line and precept upon precept. We have to go a different scripture to get all the full understanding about the same old. And in Hebrew 8 and 1, uh, it's written on the side that that throne, they have what? Mercy seat, meaning it's the mercy seat. Now, here it is in Revelation chapter 8 and 3. It is telling you where this mercy seat is. And the mercy seat, somebody show me where the mercy seat is. If we understand that scripture, show me where the mercy seat is. Show me on the diagram. Because it's telling you where to find it. In Revelation chapter 8 and 3. It tells you that the mercy that he shall offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the what? The golden altar. Where's the golden altar? Which is before what? The throne of Yahweh. The golden altar of incense is this. This is the golden altar of incense. And, the, and we said this is for what? The prayers of the saints. Hallelujah. Huh? That's, the, that's it. And before the throne of Yahweh, this golden altar of incense is before what? The throne of Yahweh. And this is the throne of Yahweh. The mercy seat of Yahweh Almighty. And it's telling you the location of where to find the throne of Yahweh Almighty. I don't know if you understand it. Huh? I don't know if you understand it. The golden altar of incense, he said the purpose for that angel is to what? And another angel came and stood before the altar. Having a golden censer, you know, but you can't take this out, we ain't touch a golden censer yet. The golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, like what the priests do. They would take the incense in the golden uh, uh, censer, and they would sprinkle it what? all around that golden altar of incense. This, the golden altar of incense. And he said, and that golden altar of incense is situated or is located before the throne of Yahweh Almighty. So I tell you today, the mercy seat, Sister Aaron, that is what. And when you look at the definition for the word throne, you know what it's telling you? A place to reside or sit. A throne. That is what it's all about. So, sisters and brothers. We talk about another piece of furniture which is still in heaven, so you know it ain't that away with it. The mercy seat. Yeah. Oh, not oh, yet. Not yet a shadow of things to come. Hallelujah. So I just wanted you, let's turn now to Hebrew chapter 9, verse 3. If you throw away the old covenant, you will never understand the book of Hebrew. Hallelujah. And this is showing the grace of Yahweh and the mercy of Yahweh way, way, way back then. Over. 6,000 years ago, Sister Pest, I mean Sister Johnson, a long time ago, the mercies of Yahweh. That's why I love him so much. His mercy ain't just begin at Calvary. The word said, while we were yet sinners, yes. while we were in our trespasses and said he died, we don't love him because we, we don't love, he don't love us because we love him, you know. No, we were his enemy. I didn't love him. We were breaking the law. My mother was breaking the law. My father was breaking the law. But Yahweh looked beyond that and what? He came and showed me mercy and love. Huh? You know, some of us, we can't love somebody who don't love us. Yeshua would say, oh, you hypocrite. He said, even the publicans can do that. Love those who love you. But I'm saying, if you want to be like me, you got to love those who despitefully use you. You got to pray for your enemies. Like them, that's what you call love. And it's the in spite of love. I always say love don't have a face. Mm. Huh? Love don't have a face. And love? No, none. Because if I look at some faces, we ain't gonna love it. Oh, you super say if you can't love your brother who you see, Woo. how do you think you will love me? Well, when you see me, you may not like what you, what you see. You know that when you see some children, you automatically love them. They're nice and pretty. It's easy to love those pretty little children. They're pretty little rural children. They're pretty little mango skin children. But when we look at them, they're dark little children. And they're dark little rural children. All you're going to just dark little girls and sit down. Funny, look at 
If she was pretty, I don't know what she would have do. But love ain't got no face. No face. Huh? Love will love the ugly, you see? And let me tell you, you and I was the ugly. We were so ugly until even our faces were mashed up because we were so ugly. Send her down in the muck and the mire. Yahweh couldn't even look at you and me. He had to cover us with the blood. He had to sprinkle his blood on the mercy seat to look at you and I again, Tanya. Yes. Don't care how pretty you are. He can't look at you when you and your sin. So looks ain't got nothing to do with it. So take, see, man and woman look at looks. That's why we fail. You know, man like look at you know. I like mango skin. My mother like mango skin. Hallelujah. I can tell you that. But then mango skin. It's put you in trouble sometime, yeah? Huh? I said, yes, I'm plenty there. That's right. Pretty face, tell pretty lies. Ain't no king who fell ever fell by an ugly woman. Tell me one who fell by an ugly woman. Or an ugly man. Well, a woman can be fooled, but man can be fooled too much again. And I'm only speaking, you know, generally. So don't look at looks. Don't look at might. Don't look at power. Look at his spirit. Yes. When the spirit of truth has come, yes. he will lead us into all truth. Oh. He will not testify of himself. No. Anytime I hear people talk, I, 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 me too much, I watching you. That's not like the devil. The devil said, I will ascend into heaven. I will make. See, the Holy Spirit don't brag about himself. The Holy Spirit I will make my boast in Yahweh. The humble shall hear thereof. Everything I am, I say, I am not worthy. But Yahweh will make you worthy. Because when you are declared the righteousness, there is no condemnation to them who are in Yeshua Messiah. Who walk not after the flesh. That was preserved 
for one man. The only thing the priest could do was pour the blood, which would be the Lamb of Yahweh. Just what John said. Behold the Lamb of Yahweh, Alleluia. which take it away, in the sense of the word. Alleluia. Here is Shiloh, and he's going to sit on that mercy truth seat. And not only sit on the mercy seat, he's going to sit on the throne of David, so all nations can be blessed through faithful Abraham. Alleluia. Not only that, they couldn't sit on it. Brother Jamie, they carry favor. <laughs> they couldn't sit on that. You would have been there a long time, Mrs. Avera. Long, long time they would have been you. So the John, your mouth so hard too, you'd have been there. <laughs> dead, 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 dead. Sister <laughs> Lisa, for what you do in that car out the other day, girl, you'd have been there. <laughs> the devil would have never loved. Sister Tonya, you can't bro, girl, I wouldn't even talk with you. <laughs> well, see, I'm a Montelite. I don't know who's here, nobody's Montelite. I'm a Montelite. Yeah, it Somebody said that Montana High Spirit. Yeah, they you too. Spirit just come on you sometime. Maybe <laughs> your environment is getting a hold of you. Yes, but their environment of those Eba people, they can't help but praise Yahweh oh, Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. They can't help it. So who's stealing your praise today? Trials, tribulation. That's why it's called what? The burnt offering of sacrifice. It got to be a sacrificial praise. When you don't want to do it, it got to be in spite of praise. See, he asking you to do something that you could do. He asking you to do something that you gotta deny the flesh. You gotta go beyond the flesh. You gotta go beyond yourself, and you gotta push your way forward. I right, gotta put you down to tell you stand up here. Sometimes you stand up here, you so tired out. Only Yahweh can set you free. Now another thing is. The sacrifices that will be on those altars, and I close with this, the sacrifices only lasted for one year. Yeah. Only one year. Yeah. After one year, they had to go through the whole ritual all over all again. Over the over whole again. process, somebody say, they have to start all over again. Every year, the priest, the high priest got to go yeah. and spare for his life. You see, they say, if I just miss out one thing, I could be a dead man. Yeah. Now remember, you, a high priest, that office lasted a lifetime. If he lived to be 200, nobody could have taken that away from him. The priestly order, when you become from the age of 30 to 50, 50. when you reach 50, you couldn't be a priest no more. <coughs> okay? But the high priest office was for what? A lifetime. Let's turn to Hebrew chapter 9 as we close out. And every. Oh, glory. And so, what in the way they told you? Hebrew chapter 9. Only for one year. The mercy of those goats and those animals only lasted for what? One year. And every day, on the 10th and the 7th Monday, Pastor, mm -hmm. they had to go in on the day of Yom Kippur and they had to present themselves and Israel every year. Every year. So, that is why and yet a reason why that altar of sacrifice is no more. Conducive. It ain't necessary no more. We got a high priest number one. Yeah, huh? And not only that, let's tell him what, what some other everlasting things that we have. Hebrew chapter 9, be there. Listen to some other things. Now remember I said that that old, uh, 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 that old tabernacle only lasted until what? Shiloh came. So it will be what? Demolished. Now this is what the first verse said. Now verily the first covenant or the first agreement had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle, etc., etc., etc. Now let's go to verse 5. And over it the cherubims of glory shadowing or covering the mercy seat, of which we cannot speak, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Okay? Or in details. Let's go to verse 11. But, verse 11, 9 and 11, Hebrew. But Messiah... Being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, verse 12, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, yes. he entered in what? Once. Once. Once into the holy place, not every year, 
once into the holy place, having obtained what? Eternal what? Eternal what? In other words, the price was paid, the ransom was paid once and for all. No more it had to be paid. Now let's go. So he gave us what? Eternal redemption. So you don't need that out of bread or bread or from the law. Because the ransom was eternally paid. Now let's go to verse 14. Now how much more shall the blood of Messiah, who through the what? The eternal spirit offer themselves without spot to Elohim, purge your conscience from dead work to serve the living Elohim. In other words, those animals did not have eternal spirit, so they couldn't put, the, the eternal spirit of those animals couldn't go in you because they did not have a what? Eternal spirit. When Yeshua come, His Holy Spirit came into you who cannot die and He don't need to die no more. Verse 15. And for this cause, He is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of transgressors, that's you and I, that were under the first testament, huh? that were under the first covenant, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal what? Eternal inheritance. In other words, in order for them to see the favor of Abraham for one every year, the blood had to be shed on that day. In order for them to have a what prosperous year, but Minister Lord, you and I, we can have a good day every day. Because it's an eternal what? Inheritance. When Yeshua hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. And believe me, I want to see a people who demonstrate more grace in Yahweh. I want to see a people who have more confidence in what the eternal salvation that he has brought to you and I. I want to see a people who lay down this body as a sacrifice. Don't tell me that ain't you. It may not be you, but it's Yahweh's spirit. Huh? But we want to praise Him. When your husband touch you, he got more effective for Yahweh. That's so poor, hey. So what is causing us not to praise Him? Huh? What is causing you not to Shabbat Him? Offer your body a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto Yah. Which is your reasonable service. Even the Rakata Adonai, the Ish Lanaka. Ye Adonai Panave Leka, the Hunaka. Isa Adonai Panave Leka, by a shed leka, shallow. Yahweh Almighty bless you and keep you. Yahweh Almighty make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahweh Almighty lift up his countenance upon you. I give you peace. Shalom. Hallelujah. Thank you. Give it praise. We're going to today. We'll sing this song. Yahweh.